number of years I served on the ECFE committee. I was the uh, school board representative. So, um, and I worked with the director. Uh, you know, there are some good programs uh, connected with that. I've seen that, but there is an overriding concern also. And uh, if Senator Kunish would uh, yield for a question. Senator Kunish will you yield, she will yield. Senator Grudenhagen. Oh, thank you, Mr. President, Senator Kunish. You know, I see their school choice in here, like page 19, uh, that there's a uh, parent's choice, but do they have to, my understanding is they have to go to a licensed private uh, <laughs> facility, is that correct? Senator Kunish, to the question, page 19. Mr. President and, and uh, Senator Grunhagen, um, the first line under there on 19.21 says, nothing in this chapter might, must be construed as preventing parents of a child with a disability from sending the child to a school of their choice if they so elect, subject to admission standards and policies adapt, uh, adopted according, and then it gave, gives you a bunch of other, um, the sections and chapters. So I believe um, it just like it says, it's parents' choice. Senator uh, Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Kudinsch. So evidently they don't have to be licensed, but if they decide to make a private choice, does the requirements as far as curriculum and, and those other requirements follow the child to that place where they're going? If Senator Kunish would uh, yield for a question. Senator Kunish will yield. Senator Kunish to the question. Uh, Senator Grunhagen, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying as far as a curriculum following the child. Senator Grunhagen, you want to clarify? Yeah, well, um, Senator Kunish, I, uh, like when I was on the ECFE uh, program, they had a curriculum that they wanted to be taught to the children. And uh, my, con my concern is that if the, the parent chooses a private uh, choice for their child, that the requirements will follow that child into the, the place where they chose, where the parents chose to take them. Is that correct? Uh, Senator Kunish, if she that yield. question, she will you. Mr. President and, and Mr. Grunhagen, uh, Senator Grunhagen, I'm still not quite certain what you're saying, but what I do know is that, um, uh, that you're, your question doesn't really relate to this section that you're talking about. No. This has nothing to do with non-resident students out of district, and that's not what this does. Um, it talks about, yeah, I'm just very confused by that question. I don't know how to answer it. Senator Grudenhagen. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Okay, I'll leave that. Here's the question then, can a, the way, the way I read the bill, if it's a five-star program, you get a doubling of the reimbursement, is my understanding. And can a private organization or a private uh, uh, entity that takes care of the child qualify as a four-star uh, program? Uh, yes, Senator, Senator Kunish, Kunish would uh, yield for a question. She will yield. Uh, did you hear the question, Senator Kunis? I did hear the question. Senator Kunis. Yep. So um, I think that would I think that uh, they would be able to do that. Um, uh, so what this section does, it allows parents of students with disabilities to enroll in those non-resident districts that provide those specific services to students with disabilities. 
Um, and that's not really how it, the way you're describing it doesn't really work. Um, there are different ratings, but I don't, I, I'm not familiar with the way you're describing it. Senator Grudenhagen. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Kunish and uh, Mr. President. I guess my question is, can a, a private entity, uh, what steps do they have to go through to become a four-star, uh, to get a four-star rating? All right, Senator uh, Kunish, she will yield. Senator Kunish. So from what I understand, this star rating, it's one to five, and those that have those higher ratings have employees and programs in there um, where the employees perhaps have continuing education and professional development and continue to address unique uh, um, situations and education as well as the programming. So yes, these children could go to, let's say your, your church down on the corner has special programs specifically for kids with disability, um, then, uh, then those scholarships or those dollars would be able to be used in that, in that instance. Senator Grudenhagen. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Kunish. Uh, that kind of answers my question. Uh, the next question I would have is that um, obviously this program would want to collect uh, data on the uh, children. My understanding is it will go to, the, to a future department, which is in the HHS Commerce Committee, of children, youth, and families. Uh, it will have a commissioner. How many FTEs would it also have, if Senator Kunish would uh, yield for a question? Uh, she will yield. Uh, Senator Kunish, did you hear the question? I did hear the question. Senator Kunish. And um, Senator Grunhagen, that's not in this bill, so I couldn't tell you exactly how many they are planning to, um, to uh, um, employ in that new department that they're considering. Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, uh, Senator Kunish. So obviously that's, that's something we'll have to find out. But the, um, the other thing is, uh, my understanding is that this program would also collect health information on the children zero to five. Is that correct? If she would yield? She will yield, uh, Senator Kunis. Again, uh, Senator Grunhagen, we don't know exactly how and what this new, um, this new committee would, or this new, um, entity would be, and so I wouldn't be able to say exactly what, the, what kind of data they would be collecting. Senator Grudenhagen. Yeah, this is troubling, members. I think there should be clarity on that in this bill uh, so that we know what data they're collecting, who collects it, and exactly what it will be used for, and if it would be kept private uh, versus uh, identifiable to the child. And again, when it's in the hands of the government, we've seen uh, federally and even at the state level a misuse of some of this data. So I do think uh, the bill should have clarification uh, on what the data will be used for. Uh, I have one more question for Senator Kunish, if she would yield. Senator Kunish, she will yield. Senator Grudenhagen. Oh, thank you, Mr. President, Senator Kunish. Uh, you know, under the indicators of progress, uh, there's a statement about identity for gender. Are we going to be asking preschool zero to five children if they have to decide whether they're a boy or a girl? Senator Kunish. Mr. President, um, if Senator Grunhagen would tell me what line he's looking at, I would appreciate it. Senator uh, Grunhagen, which line are you looking at? I'm looking at the indicators of progress, uh, and I'm just looking at the, uh, uh, the uh, summary that I was given by our staff. So it sounds like he doesn't have a specific page. Senator Kunis, can, uh, uh, um, are, are you clear on the question, or you need more information? 
I, yes, uh, Mr. President, I'm wondering where uh, Senator Grunhagen is finding that language. Senator Gru Grunhagen, do you have the ability to say where the information yes. is? Just a minute, Mr. President. I just need a little help from the staff. I don't mind waiting. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President? Senator Grunhagen. Yeah, I'm ready to answer the question for Senator Kunish. It would be on line 14.3 under assessment required. And then uh, you go down to line 14.11, uh, align to the state early childhood indicators of progress. And that's a booklet put out by MDE. And that has the indicators of, under in, the indicators of progress in that booklet. It states identified gender in it, as far as the uh, preschool is concerned. Uh, uh, are you clear, Senator Kunish? Uh, Senator Kunish. So, from what I understand, the indicators for uh, the uh, early childhood indicators of progress, um, those indicators for preschools focus on how children show confidence <laughs> and self-direction, um, how they identify gender and their self as part of a family and community and culture and their ability to make choices. Uh, it looks at their verbal expression of needs and emotions, the responses to changing behavioral expectations, and uh, the beginning to manage, you know, how they start to manage conflict in social, uh, in social interactions and situations. So um, it's important to remember that at this age, Children's social emotional skills are highly irrelated to their development in their environment, and certainly it's part of a broader developmental um, spectrum. And um, this is all part of how these kids see themselves within their family and their community and the groups that they interact in. Uh, Senator Grudenhagen. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, thanks for that uh, response, Senator Kunish. But specifically, it says identify gender. So in that booklet, under indicators of progress, is it going to be asking preschool children to identify whether they're a boy or a girl? If Senator Kunish would uh, yield for questions. Senator Kunish will yield. Senator Kunish. Uh, Mr. P President and S Senator Grunhagen, I don't know that. And I don't, um, I don't know that, and I can't answer that for you. Senator Grudenhagen. Oh, thank you, uh, Senator Kunish and uh, Mr. President. See, this is the problem, though, is that when we had this kind of ide ideologue uh, philosophy in some of this curriculum that's going to be taught to the children preschool, then we can start getting to the point of indoctrination rather than concentrating on what's best for the child and encouraging a family unit. 
And that's where I think some of the other concerns are coming from, and I definitely have a concern in that area. You know, another area is that uh, the state seems to be on a path to try to mandate certain vaccinations. Now, by the way, I've been vaccinated. My children have been vaccinated, okay? But uh, when I was on the HHS committee, we had three uh, Somali uh, moms testify uh, uh, with concerns about vaccinations. And here were their basic concerns, regardless of which side of the issue you were on. One was the age at which the vaccinations were given. Number two was the number of vaccinations given at that young age at one time. And the third was uh, the ingredients that were in the vaccination. And, you know, we had testimony on both sides of it, but I'd say if you address those three areas, you'd go a long ways to lowering the temperature on this vaccination co controversy, which I see will be a part of uh, this type of a program for preschool children uh, when the state mandates certain types of vaccinations. And some parents have very good concerns about that. So members, I wish there was a little bit more clarification of that in the bill also in terms of collecting health data that will be going to a state program. Now this is the, this will be the last question. I know I said that before, but uh, Mr. President, Senator Kunish would uh, yield for one last question. Senator Kunish, will you yield? Uh, she will yield. Senator Grudenhagen. Oh, thank you, Senator Kunish. Uh, yeah, when I was on the ECFE committee, one of the primary goals of it was to address the achievement gap in our state. Now, we have one of the worst achievement gaps between Caucasian and minority students in the United States. And we've tried a host of different ways of addressing that. And now we come with the idea that we can ad address that achievement gap with these early childhood programs. So Senator Kunish, is that one of the primary goals of this program is to address the achievement gap? Senator Kunis to the question. Mr. President and uh, Senator Grunhagen, this certainly is one of those attempts to get, um, get those resources and the supports to those students uh, or those children at you know, the earliest opportunity. And when we think about uh, what it takes to create and, and grow, basically, a happy, healthy child. Uh, it is all-encompassing. It's health care. It's, um, uh, it's interaction with other students. It's interactions with other uh, adults. It's uh, providing the opportunity for that child to participate and grow in, a, in um, a group of people that perhaps look like them and share the same culture. For example, in um, the Way to Grow program uh, or the, uh, uh, that uh, Senator Green was talking about, um, especially when it came, comes to our Native kids, it's so important that those kids have that ability or that opportunity to have that cultural, uh, that cultural impact, especially the elders that are there to speak the language and to, um, to sing the songs and teach the kids to drum and, and learn about their culture. Um, White Earth itself has 12 different schools for that. Red Lake has two, Mille Lacs has six, Lower Sioux has uh, two themselves, and Leech Lake has nine. So this is a perfect example of how to do it differently than the boarding school era. This is where the families are bringing their children to these programs to these sites that are culturally uh, adapted to that child and to that culture. And so this is one of the ways uh, that we can make sure that those child arrive into our elementary schools um, on target uh, health-wise 
emotionally, socially, verbally, uh, and if they aren't, there's that opportunity to do early assessment and get them the help that they need. Perhaps, um, perhaps they don't hear so well, or maybe there's a sight problem that they're not <clears throat> aware of. These are all opportunities to ensure that we are narrowing that opportunity gap. Hopefully Sen we're going to eliminate them. Senator Grudenhagen. Oh, thank you, uh, Senator Kunish, uh, Mr. President, for that response. And I agree with a lot of that, but it is not going to solve our achievement gap members. And this is what I want to get across. One of the primary goals of this, of this program is to solve the achievement gap, which again, we have a, one of the worst uh, in, the, in the nation, regardless of spending billions of dollars uh, on the program. And here's the problem. Uh, 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 Mr. President and members. The problem is we have pursued a faulty way of trying to teach children <coughs> reading. And that faulty approach is called whole language. And that uh, is a memorization of the words. It also includes inventive spelling and creative writing. These, are, these philosophies are, are, are based on psycholinguistic. It's a psychology approach to teaching reading, and it doesn't work. It causes problems. We need to teach intensive systematic phonics. English is a sound syllable-based language. If you look in a dictionary and you don't know how to pronounce a word, you look to the right to see what the phonetic breakdown is. If you haven't learned the rules of phonics, you don't have a chance in the world of pronouncing that word accurately. So members, again, we're using this program to try to achieve, to uh, solve a problem that will never be solved with early childhood. We have to change the way we teach reading in our public schools. So members, with the uh, type of vagueness in this uh, program and the uh, unclear answers in terms of the curriculum that'll be used, I'm gonna have to be a red vote. Thank you, Mr. 